So uh, my impressions of uh, this day at uh, this uh, senior fellows uh, meeting at Synagos is first of all about the uh, diversity uh, of the people who are involved, um, the very wide range of experience from many different countries uh, brought together here in uh, one of the most important and volatile uh, regions of the world. Uh, I'm impressed by the energy and drive of people who are mainly from civil society in this conversation about the role of civil society leadership. I think there is something of a natural uh, tendency uh, to assume that the uh, solutions of the world uh, lie in the hands of ordinary people, which I think at a basic level is true. I think though it's also true that it's very important for organizations in civil society to think hard about how they manage their relationships with government and the private sector. These three big wheels, civil society, government and the private sector, will be in all of our lives and there is not much mileage to be had in each party thinking the other party is the problem without talking to it. And so I think uh, this conversation from civil society is interesting insofar as it brings that perspective. I think the other thing that is interesting is the fact that uh, Synagos tries to draw all of this together by thinking of the whole system's consequences of what we do. It's very easy for us all just to focus on our own little neck of the woods uh, and forget uh, that ultimately what we're trying to do is think of the world as a set of interconnected people and interconnected systems whose future is one way or the other tied to one another. There is a great opportunity here for an exchange from people from vastly different backgrounds tied together by a vision of a better world and some help from Synagos of ways of thinking about how to make change. Very fulfilling, um, fulfill, fulfilling spiritually and professionally at the same time. Um, I, I am benefiting from what's happening right now. We had a, a, a breakaway group and in one of the groups it really brought me back to my work location where there is need to sit, relax, and reflect upon your modus operandi, how you are carrying out your work. And it reminded us that a leader is a designer, is a teacher, but at the same time is a learner. You need to be learning as you lead, as you design programs, as you interact uh, with your target group. Um, you, you need to learn from your target group. You also need to learn from the processes, the programming processes within your organization. But for you to do that, you need to sit, relax and reflect. My first time at, at Synagos, um, at this global meeting, it was um, for me uh, very inspiring and, and eye-opening in, in, in some ways and, and I mean reconfirming elements I'm constantly thinking about in, in other ways. Um, the main issue I, I, I again take away is um, that if we want to achieve really social transformation, it, the way is um, through collaboration and partnerships, um, which from my point of view is going even beyond the, let's say, win-win situation, because win-win um, still allows you to uh, to let's say think in your organizational boundaries um, and I very much believe that um, if we really want to go for the ambitious goals for real social change on a on a major scale um, that we have to think about and design the common purpose and this necessarily goes beyond the organizational boundaries so it's beyond brands and egos and, and, and focusing on the course um, and there were several examples today where I felt very comfortable because um, and these, um, let's say, multi-stakeholder, multi-sector um, partnerships did happen in, in, in several occasions and they did work, um, which was quite, was quite um, let's say, exciting to see. Can you say your name, please? I am Sharmila Kargi, I am Sinodis Fellow from Nepal. 
And how have you liked the session so far? Oh, it is very practical and the senior fellows and social innovators from around the world, they're sharing their own experiences. Basically, I like the collaborative approach and how they are learning. We are sharing, learning the best practices, each other, and I think, uh, I'm sure we will take back home these old best practices. Thank you. And has there been anything particular that you think you'll take back home with you? Yes, of course. Today I have been in one class that is uh, uh, social transformation or personal transformation. It was something like very uh, kind of spiritual, but uh, it is very, very good. Uh, people like me, as a manager, I have uh, lots of stress, lots of tension, but how to manage this, lot, this stress, tension, and uh, work uh, without any tension, that is the important session today to me, and I'll take back home and, and I'll try to implement for first of all for myself and to others my colleagues and organizations and my uh, the second dance leadership thank you can you say your name please yes uh, my name is Meita May Al Dapash I am from Kenya and how has your experience been at the senior fellows meeting in Amman um, this is our I believe fifth day uh, in the program and I I'm, I'm quite honestly, I'm speechless. I this surpassed my expectations. Um, what has been most rewarding for me is uh, meeting uh, with the fellows from across the globe, people who have tremendous amount of experience in social work, people who've uh, been involved in activism of different kinds, and I have really learned a lot from them. Um, the way the program has been executed has been flawless, in my opinion. And um, okay. I, um, I, I, this is uh, for me. Uh, I live here with tremendous satisfaction. I've learned so much, um, and I think there is a lot I bring back home. Meeting in Jordan was a multifaceted, a multi advantage because we are also inspired by the historical uh, background and historical uh, uh, treasuries of this uh, old uh, and historic place. So the, 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 this meeting was quite, quite colorful in many aspects. So I believe uh, even the coming sessions could give us such uh, an exposure to different different perspectives, the historic, technical, systemic approach, experiences of, uh, that are applied uh, in different parts of the world. Uh, this is very impressive and I believe that this, uh, the effort that I am doing at home, especially in, the, in bringing uh, or bridging partners to explore uh, the partnership potentials or the future, water future and livelihood future uh, of uh, Ethiopia and the region as, uh, uh, in general. So it gives me more energy to think about even continental level or international level uh, application of some of the efforts which are being uh, exercised in Ethiopia. Uh, it went very well, and uh, there were a lot of there was a lot of interest in uh, the idea of of how it is that we uh, organize our small entrepreneurship and the steps to uh, to doing pilot programs and then scaling through partnerships. And uh, one of the aspects that I did mention was that we had been scaling our models within India, and uh, through the Synergos uh, assistance, we had begun the idea of doing a similar scaling uh, across in Nepal. Can you say your name, please? Hi, I'm Ateiji Mota from Brazil. And how's your experience been in the last session, Ateiji? It was great. It was a pearl learning session on um, a project called Straight World Football, which is very interesting because I'm from Brazil, and Brazil is, as everybody knows, bigger in what we call soccer. But um, we're exploring ways of bringing together different countries to work uh, with football as as a means uh, to um, 
stimulate development on the ground, especially in poor communities. It had what kind of feedback did the fellows provide or what kind of questions were asked? They were very supportive and they were very interested in understanding um, if there was something about sports in general or if there was something about football. And then I think people learned um, about football as being particularly interesting in this aspect of bridging cultures and bridging divides and, you know, being capable of being understood and practiced um, in different countries in completely different regions and even in some places being capable of bridging a gender gaps. So I think for a lot of people it was a, some sort of um, discovery. The presentation was uh, excellent I, I, in a sense that it did tackle uh, women and uh, girls issues uh, really above board. I guess this um, their initiative in Bangladesh has been uh, very participatory. Uh, it has taken uh, the entire community into, you know, these issues and being part of solving them. It has taken all these stakeholders, and um, I think I was very impressed, particularly uh, on how they've been able or successfully managed to engage. Uh, government, NGOs, CBOs, and the entire community into wanting to be part of issuing, sorry, into part of solving both the women's issues and the girls' issues, especially in as far as it involves uh, developing uh, girls' education, raising awareness on their basic human rights, arranged marriages. It is very rare in most of our countries to be able to have a buy-in from all the stakeholders that include government even, the judiciary, the police, the teachers, the religious leaders and fundamentalists. It is um, entirely it is precisely overwhelming for me to hear there is such uh, success in any initiative that seeks to address these issues. Thank you. And how have you found the program over the course of this week for your own work? I think very enriching, very enriching, I must say. Um, both at my institution level, I mean organizational level and uh, personal level, levels, I, I see a lot of, um, what should I say, um, deeper, deeper growth into the way people are implementing organizations in their own countries. They want to be, they want to engage with all stakeholders in a, in their national levels, which I found uh, very impressive. It, it more helps me, or it has helped me, to review or to rethink on how, back in my situation, even difficult as it is, at some point, uh, I'm gaining strategies from these different countries on how best these issues can be tackled to have buy-in from, you know, the government, the community, and other CBOs without, you know, hurting anyone's feelings. Thank you. The uh, senior fellowship meeting is always uh, a very big excitement. And this time around, we had the opportunity of uh, discussing some things which were very topical. One of the issues that we have been looking at is leadership but also uh, the aspects of social, uh, managing social complex uh, situations. And I think one of the things that has come out uh, today when we're looking at systemic change and how it does arise is uh, the issue of policy. Uh, most of the time, it's the focus is on the absence of policy or the issues around development of policy. But what comes out uh, in our discussions today is the fact that it's not only that, actually there is also a huge component around policy implementation. 
there are major constraints around policy implementation that uh, hinder the uh, realization of policies uh, being able to change people's lives. For example, the issue of corruption. I think that uh, we looked at examples where a number of policies have come into place, but at the point of implementation, corruption becomes a very big hindrance uh, for that realization. Also, uh, would be other aspects around uh, capacities. Uh, probably the policy is already in place, but there would be huge underlying issues uh, that uh, would require various sectors uh, of society to get engaged for that policy to be implemented. Such constraints don't come uh, uh, easily to people's minds. Um, the other thing that we uh, did uh, enjoy today was uh, the, the wide array of uh, experiences that we did share coming from all over the world, different continents. Uh, it was very exciting to see that there are common things, common themes that run across. Uh, the issue of partnerships becomes extremely critical, especially in uh, being able to engage with governments, being able to engage with the private sector, and being able to engage with civil society. So these discussions are very, very energizing and help us to uh, begin to look at issues from a very, very uh, different uh, perspective. And I think that we are living in times where these type of perspectives are very critical because I learned a lot uh, on the <coughs> land rights movement in Kenya, the education reform movement in Mexico, the production marketing movement in South Africa, and the insights also shared with us on the importance of personal transformation vis-a-vis -vis social transformation, the importance of integrating personal change activities into our organizational development work. And most relevant to me as executive director, the idea and then the tool shared on diversifying fund sources for us as an organization to be more uh, sustainable.